Hi, I'm Satyan Lakshmi Drusimha. I'm a professor of pediatrics and the chief of the division of neonatology at University at Buffalo. Today I'll be talking to you about grading the oxygen trials in preterm infants. Oxygen is the most commonly used drug in preterm babies. Oxygen is essential for life, but excess oxygen can cause toxicity. So what is the optimal target oxygen saturation for preterm neonates that would result in reduced death or neurodisability at 18 to 24 months? To answer this question, five trials were conducted in the last decade. These include the SUPPORT trial, predominantly performed in the US, the CARD trial, conducted in Canada and a few other countries, and finally the BOOSH-2 trial, which was conducted in the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. In these trials, extremely preterm infants, less than 28 weeks of gestation, were randomized into two categories. The low oxygen category, where the target oxygen saturation was 85 to 89 percent, and the high oxygen category, where the oxygen saturation target was 91 to 95 percent. A meta-analysis of these trials, published in 2014, suggested that in the low oxygen category, the incidence of necrotizing enterocolitis and mortality before discharge was significantly higher, and in the high oxygen category, the incidence of severe retinopathy of prematurity was significantly higher. Based on these results, the European guidelines for management of respiratory distress syndrome changed. In 2010, these recommendations suggested that the saturation should be maintained between 85 to 93 percent. In 2013, they were updated to recommend a saturation range between 90 to 95 percent with a level of evidence B. We repeated this meta-analysis and added the quality of evidence using the GRADE methodology and we felt that most of these recommendations either received a moderate or a low grading because of the following factors. The pulse oximeter algorithm was changed midway in these trials. It did influence the results of the BOOSH to UK and Australia, and also it was changed in the CAR trial. Secondly, the BOOSH to UK and Australia trials were stopped early because of increased death before discharge in the low oxygen group. Death before discharge was not the primary pre-specified outcome in any of these trials. Although a 6% difference was expected between the low oxygen group and the high oxygen group, there was lack of significant separation between the two groups and there was significant overlap between the low group and the high oxygen saturation group. And finally, for the outcome of retinopathy of prematurity, there was significant heterogeneity, as noted on this forest plot, where in the support trial, retinopathy of prematurity was much more common in the liberal oxygen group, whereas in the CARD trial, no significant difference was observed. So to conclude, there is no difference in the pre-specified outcome of death or severe disability at 18 to 24 months between the two groups. The mortality before NICU discharge was higher and severe retinopathy of prematurity was lower in the low target oxygen group. However, the quality of evidence of these findings is low. So we conclude that there is still significant uncertainty about the optimal target range for oxygen saturation in extremely preterm infants. Thank you.